In this first part of the course, we considered the behavior of the winds in the northern hemisphere. Because of the anti-clockwise rotation of the Earth around its axis, the way winds rotate in the northern hemisphere is different from that in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, the wind rotates in a clockwise way around the areas of high pressure. And anti-clockwise around the areas of low pressure. The wind flows from high to low pressure regions. But how? Following a straight line? Well, not really. There are some factors affecting the wind direction. In theory, the wind rotates around the areas of high pressure in a clockwise way. In this way, the wind flows like a river among the isobars. The friction causes the wind to slow down. Keeping the pressure gradient equal, the wind aloft is always stronger than the wind at ground level. This is because the Earth's surface and the sea behave as a brake for the wind speed, slowing it down. In this way, the wind tends to divert towards the areas of low pressure by an angle varying between 10 and 30 degrees, depending on the roughness of the surface. And this is the reason why the wind is subject to an upward diversion. This is an important point to remember at any time we look at a synoptic chart. Let's now talk about the law of Bouis Ballot. In his studies, the scientist Bouis Ballot determined how the movement of the wind is influenced between the areas of high and low pressure. And there exists an easy rule helping us to find the orientation and the position in accordance with the highs and lows, simply by observing the headwind. A boat facing the lows, as in the example, will have the high pressure to the left and low pressure to the right. That's the way to find out where our position lies in relation to the main weather system. The understanding of how the wind rotates within a low pressure system becomes extremely important to decide whether our sailing will enjoy favorable winds or will come against winds from the opposite direction. In this case, we notice a 25 knot wind from the southeast in this area and a 25 knot one from the northwest in the other area. This means that this red boat sailing windward will be tacking while facing the headwinds, whereas the blue boat will always take advantage of the favorable winds. As to the B. Coriolis force, we can talk about it at length, but the important thing is to memorize by means of this simple drawing that the wind flowing over the Earth's surface is always deviated to the right in the northern hemisphere in relation to its flow direction. This is a basic law that cannot be seen in practice, but it's worth knowing. We'll see why later. This picture shows the effect of friction at ground and sea level. As you can observe, the red arrow indicates the wind at a certain altitude. Because of the friction, the wind near the surface is deviated to the left, and the amount of deviation is greater where the surface is rougher. Therefore, the wind is subject to a greater deviation caused by the surface obstacles and slows down more over the Earth's surface than over the sea, where in theory, the wind is stronger, keeping the pressure gradient equal. To fall in love with marine meteorology means checking the weather bulletins in a more critical way without taking for granted a forecast reporting a wind of a certain direction and speed in a certain area, but rather understanding the logic behind it. There are some signs under your eyes every day, such as the sea breezes. They are not determined by the heat of the Earth's surface stored during the hot part of the day on the surface, causing an incoming of cooler air from the sea, as in this case. In fact, during daytime, and especially in the afternoon, it is the coast that is affected by the sea breeze, 
a typical phenomenon occurring in anticyclonic conditions. The earth warms up more rapidly than the seawater. During the night after sunset instead, the earth will cool down in a greater extent. The sea is capable to keep the heat stored for longer. In this case, as the air flows from the cooler to warmer areas, the land breeze sets in. A boat at anchor, for example, will tend to rotate always on the bow against the wind. This means the regular alternating of thermal breezes along the coast is a sign that the fine weather is going to persist. If after a sea breeze during the night the wind were to continue to flow in from the sea, we would not be in the presence of a coastal breeze circulation. Something different is happening. A situation of gradient wind is more likely to begin picking up. We will have to understand how the weather is going to develop over the region in the course of the night.